uh, founder of the Free West Popular Campaign and the leader of DEMAC, which is a tribal assembly of uh, various tribes from the highlands of West Papua. Uh, so, yeah, without further ado, Mr. Jenny Mender. Well, um, uh, first I'll start welcome you in the my language called Wa 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 Wa. It's uh, why I would say that because I'm a chief as well, and uh, I'm also an ex political prisoner, and I'm the founder of Free West Papua campaign, and the founder also international lawyer for West Papua, which is now uh, Jennifer Robinson uh, leading this. Also, I found out international parliamentarian for West Papua. Uh, so today I'm with you here. But I left these people behind with the tears. Um, but very good to meet you all. And uh, you are people of South Africa fighting against apartheid government. And now that freedom you have but you still continue to fight some equality, health care, education. That is very important. That every human being has the right to be at those equal. But where I come from is different. So different story. This is you can see Indonesia hidden colonies. Fifty years Indonesia hidden struggle of people of West Papua, nearly 50 years. That is what happening. This is the map of, this is the New Guinea. This is South Africa, we, they we here now. Can you go back a little bit? Okay, why that people in, the, in, in that ended up with there? You can see the, we will talk a little bit about the, later but this is where the 15,000 they left this continent Africa continent went down that way then go the settled New Guinea Island which is now they are settled in New Guinea Island you can see the map this is Indonesia we never be part of Indonesia you can see the map we are free people never this is a Dutch Dutch colonized almost 300 years we are free people never colonized any other. Only that's discovered here later after they colonized. And they just went here to look bird watching and that's that discovered. Then they found the people. Okay, this is the island. The Melanesia is a black island. You got Micronesia, Polynesia. So there's map uh, that's not the up here here. But that, that's, uh, this is New Zealand, Australia. You can see this is a black island. Okay, there's people, are black people here. They settled here, then they spread. Salomon, um, Vanuatu, Fiji, Kanak. Uh, this is uh, still under the uh, French colony, but they will choose the, in the, the destiny in the future. Will be a referendum 19, uh, 2018, that's the plan. Okay, that's this. Uh, you can see that this map, this is the, the whole Mel Mel map of Melanesia. Okay. So where is the West Papua located? You can see just 500 kilometers uh, north of Australia. That's uh, South Africa. That is the, you can see, this is the, what happened here, um, uh, I always describe this island like um, three men walk on the street and then, uh, okay, someone got the money, went in the shop, or you see the donut inside the shop, and okay, let's, I bought this donut, and let's, we share it. And that's what happened. This is three men conquered this island, and they see it full of gold and timber and mineral and bird of paradise. So <coughs> let's share it. What happened? Okay, they cut three pieces. Okay, northern part is German, southern part British, Western half is uh, Dutch. So what happened? That uh, British take over from the German. Then they give independent called country called Papua New Guinea. They're same people, very similar culturally, identically, all very similar linguistically. 
But this one, this side, a very sad story. What happened? As soon as the um, uh, Dutch take over, uh, after that Dutch control over, and then including the rest of the Indonesia, then Indonesia got independent in 1945, uh, West Papua is still Dutch New Guinea. Then um, Indonesia really wanted uh, West Papua. That said, no, these people are very different, black people. They are, they are, they are connected with the rest of Melanesia. They are linguistically, geographically, ethnically are very different. They are still older. What happened? 1960, Dutch uh, prefer to give us independence, recognize our parliament, our national anthem, everything. So after uh, giving the pen only 19 days, then what happened? Can you go? Okay. This is the what happened. Uh, they call it Netherlands New Guinea. That's the 20 years we under that. Uh, we are like ready to get, take on our country. We have a flag. Can you go back a little bit? Okay. First, yeah. Okay. You can see this is the this is the our national flag. Morning star. This is what happened. Uh, we already have independent 90, 90 days. Then. Indonesia really pushing, pushing. The Indonesia threatening the, the America and um, uh, European, and including British Australia. Okay, if you not give us West Papua, we will join Cold War. That's a threat. Then, whoa. So we are like sacrifice the, the, the sake of this uh, big power. Okay, that is a timeline that a little bit, uh, this one too. Why I'm campaigning for self determination? because our political right, our legal right, was violated under the international law. And people respect the law, but the law is uh, they're talking about the principle. But then what happened in West Papua history? Okay, this is the, this is the, the where 1969 they give independence. They recognize all the flag and anthem, and then 19 days. What happened here? They pushing that. Okay, they're pushing that, but that's a no. That's uh, the argument that they have different color, different people. They need to get the they independent, they're all independent. Okay, what happened here? The, okay, the Dutch, the Indonesia, and the uh, US. Okay, let's discuss. Maybe we have uh, some agreement and with West Papua. But what happened? 1962, 15th of August in New York, West Papua never involved any discussion. Even in the building, even even no one invited. They decide West Papua future. They sign an agreement called New York Agreement. That means after they decide, one man, one vote. They decide. That didn't happen in West Papua. This is this is what happened. Actual free choice. Okay. After as soon as they uh, agree, then Indonesia step in will militarily occupy our country. Ninety then control all over uh, territory and uh, some of them they said if you uh, when 1969 come you have to vote for Indonesia some of them elder cut the tongue from them in their mouth and some of them uh, dropped from helicopter in the villages they show to, to, to the people so if you not chose to be part of Indonesia we will do it they already threatened it so they control five years from 1963 uh, until uh, 1968. Then they totally they control. And then, and then by the time the Dutch left, so that's what happened here. This is really the beginning of the bloodshed. Indonesia able to massacre 500,000 women and children. And this still happening. That's why. Uh, referendum is just formality. Didn't re including my one, the, my father, one of them chosen. My father represent uh, 500 villages, elders, leaders. He one of them, like gunpoint, grabbed his hand and then took him to military post. Okay, every leader must come. Time come, you have to vote. What happened? They training two, two, two ways. Okay, uh, if. Uh, referendum come, you have to say two things. Okay, if we say West pa uh, Papua, you just think, uh, sit down and quiet. If we say uh, Indonesia, you just jump and raise your hand. That's the training. Not educate them to, okay, time will be like this, like, no. 
just around them all the chief. And at the time, population was uh, one million, only one and twenty-six elder and people. That's now. At the time, 1969 was the one of the uh, UN represent called um, uh, Ortisanis Bolivia. He went to UN, and then this is just took note. This referendum we just took note because under the gunpoint, that's what he said. And then some African country refused. We are not recognized. Indonesia take over West Papua, and one of them, uh, president of. Uh, Senegal, uh, not Senegal, uh, Gaya, uh, Ghana, say that today we decide West Papua take over by Indonesia, but one day we'll come back because new generation <coughs> is finding out. That's why now we're, um, uh, you know, I'm part of that. Okay, that's what happened. After that, this is what they look like. After 1969 takeover, they, they said that legally West Papua part of Indonesia, but then why they still continue to kill him. This is this is situation right now. This is the one example that what Indonesia doing in West Papua. You can see this is one of the elder in the last year. Around this is what happening in the in the villages. You can see this is a traditional dress. All men they're killing and that's what happening. This is one of the Jawan Waeni, his name Jawan Waeni. And when they torture just to cut their stomach and then leave them. They were this is video in online. They're watching, he said, thank God, can you help me? And then they said, okay, tell your God, come and help me. They're laughing, just sitting around that phone line. This is uh, up the mountain, my village. This is one of the Reverend uh, Kiwo. He was, um, he was tortured with his uh, brother. He was to this young man, torture and then uh, put the uh, uh, fire in his genital. Can you see it? This is happening right now. This video are all all around the world, but this is violated human right. Where is the law? This is my question until today. This is uh, this is this one is 8th of December last year. This is school boys. He's uh, 14 to 18 years old. Until today, still um, argue between the Papuans. Uh, 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 Papuan elite, Papuan and Indonesia. No one brought the justice. That's military uh, killing on the spot, 8th of December last year. This is what happened. This is one of the my brother. Because his family named Wenda, anyone looks suspicious like have a drag law on beer, they have taken and police station question. You can see this is what Indonesia doing. This is 21st century. This is the th 3 of January, 3, uh, 3rd of January, sorry, 3rd of January in Highlands, the oldest suspicious person round him up and beat him up in the villages. Okay, this is one of the root problems is also, first root problem is act of no choice, we call act of no choice, Indonesia and big power call act of free choice. Okay, before a uh, referendum 1968, Indonesia and uh, Freeford McMoran or Rio Tinto, they signed an agreement before referendum. So Indonesia and uh, America already... Can you, can you just explain what Rio Tinto is? Rio Tinto is, um, I think, uh, Anglo-American, that's what the same... Mining company. Yes, my, uh, Rio Tinto is mining company owned by uh, Australia and British. And uh, Freeford McMoran is a base in New Orleans, that's called Freeford McMoran. So this is the, the up the mountain. This is full of gold that they want. Not a human being, but they want our resources. And everywhere in our South Africa, what happened in last year, to, you know, police kill our people just because the gold. So this is, so a referendum also is a, is a already uh, economic interest first and human rights. So the, the agreement between America um, uh, and uh, Indonesia before referendum, they already signed agreement 1980 and 1968. And 69, the, after uh, one year, and six, 1969 referendum, just four months, then uh, referendum. But that is the second important 
Yeah, you can see any suspicious, they always, they all control my people by the gunpoint. One example, when I passing this from uh, Johannesburg to Durban, Durban to here, I didn't see any uh, South Africa military holding the gun, even checkpoint, I didn't see it. <coughs> In West Papua, every kilometer there's a military post. This is what Indonesia last year announced. There is no political prisoner. They're just criminal, whatever they, they call. But that is one of the uh, leading um, human rights campaign in UK. They published this article, TAPOL. This is uh, uh, 57 political prisoners in West Papua. One of them is well-known prisoner called, um, uh, yeah, this is the Philip Karma. 15 years, I myself ended up prison just holding this morning step like 2000. And then they put me in prison. Two, 25 years charged me. And then um, uh, I managed to run away. Three times they tried to assassinate me inside prison. I, many of leaders have been poisoned in prison or dis, uh, disappear. Some of them assassinate. And he's still alive, but he's still 15 years holding his money staff flag. 15 years. In this world history. Okay, I ended up in prison. This is the uh, my lawyer uh, now currently uh, in living in UK. Uh, uh, thank you, Maynard. Jennifer Robinson. She is um, 21 years old at the time in West Papua. She was in West Papua. What happened? At the same time, I was in prison. So she working, sneaking with the old uh, human rights lawyer in, in the in the in West Papua. And what happened? She, she allow, uh, they allow her to be witness, and just student, so it's nothing happened. So what happened, she, wo she was there 14 times I went to court, and no witness, no evidence, just trying to put me in the prison 25 years, because I'm a leader at the time. So what happened after, they didn't know one day she will become eyewitness all this journey. So I, I managed to escape and then I crossed the border to Papua New Guinea and ended up in UK. She also gave the eyewitness uh, testimony to British government now I'm in the UK. So this is after I escaped and I came to United Kingdom and I settled uh, there. Uh, uh, so I found the Free West Papua campaign and I set up Free West Papua campaign with British uh, friends. Now I'm traveling around the world to, to educate the world. Why world ignored? Why? One thing that when I came to United Kingdom, I thought everybody knows because people know um, uh, the other campaign like um, the Tibet and Shurma campaign and other part of the, the world are all campaign different. But West Papua, nobody knows. That's why that. Uh, Okay, as soon as I set up that campaign and then I begin to develop some strategy. And then I launched this uh, international uh, parliamentarian for West Papua, this British Parliament, international lawyer for why this internet in two organizations I found it because our legal right to self-determination violated by under the international law. Yeah, Asia, you know, um, a UN member country, the law is above of everything. But then why, under the international law, we are violated, they violated our right to self-determination. So in this is only UN history, and uh, you know, UN history, they violated our right to self-determination. That's why UN need to correct it. But they cannot correct unless lawyer and uh, parliamentarians and all the world government come together to correct it. So that's why I, this is now uh, all these parliamentarian members all around the world. I launching in the U uh, UK, Australia, uh, many countries. In South America, many countries. So also lawyer group. Now all the lawyers around the world are joining the campaign. Not campaign, but put their name to look at the, what the Indonesia claim um, uh, over West Papua. Because international lawyer, international law is our side. That's, uh, it's a, it's a very strong um, uh, argument that this lawyer already discovered, led by Jennifer Robinson. This 
issue and then I met this uh, Prime Minister, current Prime Minister, British Prime Minister and uh, Elefani was the opposition leader. He said I will prompt my government but not until today. But uh, all the politicians, cross party are supporting the campaign. So they put their name publicly but the government they will not. But this is, I need to tell you this story. Uh, this is amazing. Okay, after 2011 to 10, uh, 2011, I came to, to net, uh, Senegal, the first time I traveled, and I came to Senegal, and that's the African Diaspora Conference. They, I represented the people of the Melanesia. I came uh, to give a presentation. President Abdullah Wade at the time, he gave 15 minutes, I brief about West Papua. After, as soon as I brief, and then I went back to UK, what happened? Indonesia put the Interpol, I'm a wanted man on the list. Yeah, they seen as me, I'm a terrorist, I'm a criminal. That's what Indonesia said. So I couldn't travel two years. But again, uh, my lawyer, Jennifer Robinson, she said at the time, uh, also she already have evidence, everything in her hand. So she presented to, uh, to um, the uh, International Secretary with a British lawyer called a uh, group called uh, Fair Trial International, They're working together and they submitted to Interpol and they remove it. And in Indonesia, very hard, working very hard to uh, persuade the Inter Interpol secretariat. And the Interpol secretariat said, you have just political motivation, you, we are not put that, they remove it. So now I'm, I'm traveling again. So after I travel to, and I travel around the world, and I'm meeting in parliamentary and Congress, Senate, and the State Department on across the world, and that's uh, U.S., Australia, parliamentarian, and Vanuatu Prime Minister in Papua New Guinea. I'm still, still continue to, to lobby, uh, to uh, persuade all these parliamentarians to support West Papua campaign for slaves and discrimination. Okay, what happened in here? People of West Papua come peacefully, and their response is uh, mili militarily trying to force them to violence, into violence. Okay. okay. Okay, this is what happened in people of West Papua. Last 50 years, they're just scared and scared to coming out on the street. But when I came out, and then I, uh, you know, campaigned around the world, and the people are gained confidence. Because 50 years, you cannot speak. Even you have, you cannot mention West Papua. You can't. West, world West Papua is a ban. You cannot. So they cannot raise the money that they're just painting the face, the body and the face. That's only to send the message out. So uh, more more people coming out really confident. This is uh, two years uh, last year. That this is all coming out on the street. You can see on the street, they don't really care. And leader of this movement called Kain Bebe, Committee National Papua, he was assassinated on the spot, as his name. This is the people coming out on the street. They don't really care. Yeah, they, yeah. this is uh, the man who uh, in the prison yeah, last three years ago, they nominated as a Nobel Peace Prize, but I didn't win. <laughs> but that's not for my focus. <laughs> that's for my, not my focus, but that's the people. Okay. Okay, this is the, uh, three weeks ago I was in the Pacific and I'm meeting with, this is the Prime Minister of Vanuatu. This is a small country but really outspoken, really outspoken until today. Even in, they don't uh, want to open embassy in, in Jakarta, they don't cut off everything until West Papua free and then we will work with Indonesia diplomatically. They cut off everything just because of West Papua, because this is our brother. And other Melanesia country really scared because Indonesia put pressure on to them, give them money, and they're really scared. But now they they already gain confidence because I'm traveling around the world and they're, they're now coming forward to, to support, like Fiji in front of, uh, Papua New Guinea and Solomon. This is amazing. My tour here, the people are sending the message. Uh, recently, uh, I was in uh, Durban, and then people just sending the message in Facebook everywhere. They're posting 
because this is the first time I've been in South Africa because the apartheid, anti-apartheid movement here is well known in the world, including my people and the people who are sacrificed their life, our leader, like Nelson Mandela, Steve Biko, and uh, Desmond Tutu, even in the US, like um, Martin Luther King in India, um, uh, Gandhi, these are like, they feel a hero uh, because their voice are like becoming louder and uh, safe of the world who are suffering under colonialism or discrimination. That also gave the confidence, including myself. And I read that great man book, uh, Long Walk to Freedom. Uh, you know, that really also gives me hope. And that's why partly I come here to seeking the spirit of the people of South Africa. Uh, whatever where you come from, but I need the spirit. Okay, this is also, they send a message. You can see South Africa flag, and uh, this also send the party because Fijian people now coming out on the street to support West Papua. That's why they send a message to the South Africa. Um, they send Africa, South Af Africa, Salata, Malayu word in South Africa. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, and uh, this is uh, why it's very important what you do. It's very important. And my people are uh, very difficult in terms of the education, in terms of the uh, equality. That's because we are still colony under the Indonesia colony. So they look at us as subhuman. They look at us as subhuman. There is no equal. That's why I'm not really speaking about how to take on after independence, I will uh, learn a lot from the and um, when I'm traveling and also what you're doing is also educate me along, uh, educate me too to when when West Papua independent how can implement because what we are fighting is not for gaining the popularity but how we need to serve the people that is the main thing. Some people this is also is uh, I learn a lot. Some leader, if they leader become a leader, that's it. That's that he want. But not me. I I want to tell the world that I'm. I, I want to help my people to free. Then I want to see see that my people sitting their family reunite. At the moment, my people are they still crying. Sometimes really hard, heartbreaking. Ten thousand refugees live in Papua New Guinea. Some of them hiding in the bush until today. And you never see any West Papua in, in, in around the world. There's few people. One in America, I myself in the US. A hundred Papuan living in uh, Australia, they cross canoe to uh, cross the ocean to seeking political asylum. We are campaigning. We luckily escape and tell the world. Otherwise, we are like in prison. Yeah, I call all West Papua prisoner. West Papua are slave. By That's why wh wherever I go, I always put my address and my tie. I never put European tie. This is I fighting for my people. This is who I am. Anybody will come here or not, that's I need to tell the truth. Why I fighting for? It's not only political independence, but social justice, economic justice, and how you how you serve your people. Because one example I want to tell you, my people always defending the forest. We call forest is supermarket. Land is our mother. That is our belief. So at the moment, our, our land, our forest, our mountain been destroyed. The Indonesian law, not our side. The law is discriminate. If you're stealing some uh, chicken and the Indonesia stealing billion dollars, they get free. Have one five years, ten years, twenty years. That's one example. You can see Philip Karma just holding the morning star flag. This is a uh, I always have this flag. This is the call morning star flag. If you're holding this West Papua 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, I myself holding this flag and giving peacefully marching put me 25 years. So that is the situation in West Papua. Thank you very much for listening to my story. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, so we take questions and uh, no questions or comments. You mentioned a long freedom, and I don't know if you missed that, but is there any books that exist on your struggle, and if so, can you direct us to them? Say again, sir. Um, you mentioned long walk to freedom, yes. and I was just wondering, does any books exist on your struggle, and if so, can you direct us to them? Yes. Every West Papua, uh, the few academic written the books about West Papua seized by the Indonesian law, seized. There is no in the curriculum how West Papua become part of Indonesia. And then few academics trying to write the books about West Papua struggle or about West Papua, how West Papua become seized by the law. Only that uh, Philip Karma, he written his own books own in, from prison. He write and then they cannot publish in Indonesia in West Papua. So they took it and then now they translate to in English in, in London. I hope uh, this book has become uh, you know, popular. It's like uh, Nelson Mandela, he's also in prison. He wrote some many stories in the book. Also this uh, Philip Karma, he's already written some books. So he's, he's, uh, he's a great man and I hope he will educate the world to more understand about the struggle. supporters in Indonesia? Yeah, that's the question. It's very good because <coughs> one thing that Indonesia, they don't know our struggle because problem, Indonesia able to ban the media. 50 years in world history, they ban media. 50 years world history, you cannot raise that money stuff like US Papua. Second, amnesty ban. Amnesty are banned, Red Cross are banned, uh, uh, International Peace Brigade, totally banned. Totally banned. So that's why it's uh, uh, public, uh, Indonesian ordinary people, they don't know our struggle. And they just look at us as black people. They are savages. They are, uh, you know, they are, uh, what they call them? Uh, yeah, they, 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 they look at different way. But that's why all the academics trying to write about West Papua, they always ban. So every West Papua are really scared to write. They just carry on their own life. That's it. Nobody, you know, care. They just, if I do this, I will be killed. That's, that's, that's what they do. But now, big help because um, media like Twitter and uh, Facebook and the new generation, Indonesian new generation, they're already finding out. They cannot stop it. That is the, the help. Even Indonesia banned the media, but now more people are finding out. Also, the Indonesia ordinary people is scared because Indonesia, one of the well-known uh, uh, human rights campaigner, um, uh, it's called. Uh, he was uh, poisoned by Indonesia military on the way from uh, Jakarta to Netherlands to study. Uh, Munir, Munir, his name is Munir, well-known. Uh, if you Google it, you will see it. Munir, uh, human rights campaigner. So since then, everybody's scared. But there are some other uh, human right, Indonesian human rights uh, uh, also concerned about this, but sometimes they raise. But people, settlers in West Papua, uh, settlers from uh, uh, other people, they, they just come, some Indonesia brought them because political motivation. They seen it, they're watching, they're really scared to talk. That's it. One of the, my friends, um, we went to school together. One thing that, uh, he always come with me and then he one of the give information to about what I'm doing because Indonesian military forced them to if not you give if you not give information we will kill you and I think that's what happened. He he one of the give information there was everything I I uh, cam um, campaigning he gave it information that was I, I was arrested. that own those mines that you showed us in the photos, where do they get the workers for those mines? Do they bring in workers from outside or how, does it, how do they actually operate those mines? Yes, that company are uh, operating in West Papua almost 50 years. The worker is not West Papuan, but worker from outside, the migrants, work worker. Uh, uh, 
the work camp. Uh, part one only for cleaning, for under uh, you know underground. And uh, some of them uh, two years ago trapped 18 people were killed. A very poor uh, safety. And uh, yeah, almost work camp from outside. But now one of the governor uh, is a uh, Papuan, Papuan governor from where I come from. He is now trying to change that he was threatened by Indonesian military. Even he announced that I invite uh, all the media now come to West Papua. And then Indonesian military said, you are not in charge of the threatening. So it's, a, it's really difficult, but uh, some Papuan already uh, uh, thinking and they bring the more Papuan worker. Uh, but again, military, military will so control that area. And military, police, and uh, intelligence are fighting together to who can control that mine. Then they create little uh, violence among uh, around the uh, mining and then they blame West Papua. Then more military. Then they ask the company, we need uh, guard, we need to keep more money for protection reasons. Is there any assistance for refugees? Humanitarian assistance for refugees. In West Papua, it's totally banned any NGO in West Papua. And 10,000 refugees in Papua New Guinea, even they are not recognized as refugees because Indonesia put pressure on the Papua New Guinea government. So we at the currently because West Papua is a militarily controlled some of the UN represent in the Jakarta, but they are not allowed to visit West Papua. It's a ban, totally ban. Have you had any contact with the South African government? Uh, yeah, um, now just this is my tour, trying to uh, build a network from the grassroots. I don't want to jump in, but I want to know the people at the grassroots level, from the grassroots, because they have more experience to liberate themselves from the apartheid. So that's why I'm from walking. I'm driving, you know, the, the, all the friends took me. I, I want to all the drive, drive me to all the way to Cape Town. So I'm from Cape Town, uh, uh, Johannesburg to here. Yeah, so I, moon. I hope that today I will meet with uh, some parliamentarian, uh, three o'clock, so that's the beginning. But if any connection, please, uh, facilitate in the future or if you have any connection but again I bring this issue to you and uh, I hope you can be voice of people, voice like the US yeah, I, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned um, that the international campaign has had some influence on kind of building inspiration or reviving a movement in West Papua itself. Um, but what, what do you think some of the other achievements or um, advances uh, have been able to come about because of the international campaign and, and what you've been doing? Here? Yes, last three, four years now, this movement now I gained momentum. Uh, all the lawyers now come forward to, to joining and all the parliamentarians from around the world, uh, even uh, North America, or South America, because I've been in South America uh, working, even I visit uh, a Mamorangian tribe, nine tribe, just, you know, that's kind of a uh, uh, thing. But uh, uh, in terms of the uh, joining the campaign, is I think there's now a growing campaign all around the world. Um, but the government are trying to uh, ignore it. But I think, I might believe the people power will push it, because like what happened in South Africa, people power, and all around the campaign also join the campaign. I think that's, that's uh, I really hope uh, positively. Um, also, I hope this um, this campaign I'm here is right place and right uh, people I've already met. Yeah. The South African government, I think for people here, the ANC has very close connections with the Indonesian government. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they give a lot of money to the ANC. So it's 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 not going to be easy to raise this question, yeah, with the with the government. <coughs> yeah, this is a uh, one thing that I need to. Yes. Yeah. Many ways. I need everybody who you know. 
Yeah, what happened was uh, Indonesia, uh, Simon Sukarno, Suharto was came to visit South Africa. He trying to use the same sentiment because he want to, you know, came out from the colonialism because we are fighting. But he uh, he ignored what he doing toward the West Papuan people and South African people. They don't know there is a black people are fighting self determination and. For, for, for in terms of the business, in terms of the money, whatever, I call the money, millions of that revenue from West Papua. Because West Papua, second biggest gold mine in the world. That's, you can see, that's full of the gold. Okay, so next, um, BP is the second biggest uh, oil reserve in West Papua. They're operating. So they pay somebody or whatever, I don't really care. But most importantly, politically, I need to liberate my country because that money will come from West Papua. Somebody use that money, whether that money is genuine or blood money, I don't know. I don't be responsible for that business. Either. But I need to tell the truth what happened, what's going on, because you cannot undermine someone, you know, oppressed and be, be good guys. That's, that's what's happening, that's world today. But I strongly believe that it will change because, because people power. Like people thought uh, British uh, uh, were powerful at the time, but the British Empire collapsed, Russian Empire collapsed, and uh, apartheid Empire collapsed. That is because people power. This is 21st century, and you are all future leader, and so that's why I'm here. I don't really count the, what Indonesia business interest, but main thing I bring the message, and my people are crying for help this 21st century. This is only world history was for positive fighting for this. People talk about discrimination, uh, end of uh, anti-slavery, uh, or colonization, but West Papua still continue to, colonialism, colon, colonialism still continue this 21st century. Uh, that's why I'm I just, sorry, for the next question, may I just make a comment on what you just said there. Uh, Indonesia has a close relationship with, with the American region in Africa. But when the act of free choice happened in 1969, not a single African country supported. They all, um, was it, abstained. The vote not a single African country supported. Indonesia has been terrified. They're scared that the issue with West Papua becoming public knowledge, and they can't stop it now. The, the information is getting out. The young generation, all of the internet, there, they can't stop the information getting out. But Indonesia is terrified of African countries supporting the idea of African countries supporting their fellow black people on the other side. They are terrified. So Indonesia, they do the same in Melanesia as well. In Melanesia. don't even hide it. So two days ago there was an article in the Indonesian press yeah, they were talking about how to stop the rise of awareness about West Papua in Europe. And the minister talking in it actually mentioned the word uh, economic diplomacy. That's what they call it. So he was saying that in Europe the Indonesians need to stop employing more economic diplomacy. I don't, that's the word the minister uses. Use the word economic diplomacy to stop the support for West Papua for rights guaranteed by the UN. But the Indonesians are trying to argue that the UN should not stick to its own mandate, should not support its own, should ignore its all its own signatures. You know, and they're fighting. The Indonesians are fighting the losing battle. They, they, they can't win. In the end, the truth and what's the, the humanity, everything's with the West Papua and people. So in the long run, they can't, they, they can't win. They, they will be free in the end. But in the next two, three years, expect more economic diplomacy, but especially towards African countries. So, like once the Benny moves here, the Indonesians are going to come with a lot of economic diplomacy. That's to be expected. Sorry. No, I think I'll withdraw, you know, because given given the, the UN role, 
type of thing, you know. I wanted to ask that question, but I think for, for me, it would be to compliment you in, in, in actually sort of doing a dual strategy of some sort, you know, sort of going at the high level and also going at grassroots level. I think there's, there's so much that anybody can do to suppress, you know, the movement of civil society on the ground. And I think, I think you know, for me, it's just that compliment to say, it's a good thing that you also focus on the, on the, on the, you know, sort of grassroots activism type of thing, and I think that that, that would go a long way. So you know, just as a compliment to say that works pretty well. I mean, you can go up there and then you sit with people and diplomatically be told to be diplomatic, and you know, things go on and on. But if you able to mobilize on the ground, you know, ordinary citizens of the world, you know, ultimately that kind of movement may not be stifled at some point. So that's just a compliment for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think I write plays because this is uh, you are kind of very clever people, and uh, <laughs> this is this is right place. I'm can grassroots level is uh, for awareness in the, in the grassroots level, but you are also very clever people, and you can your own way to spread the message. That's uh, uh, why one target is maybe I need to n next level uh, African Union because that African Union need to mobilize uh, and also African continent because this issue uh, is. Uh, something that I, I come to here to, to spread the message and I don't know where I'm going but I leave that issue to with you. Uh, just remember West Papua, that's a blessing. Thank you. Um, I would like to just say a few sentences. I got a scholarship to go to Indonesia and I studied there for a year. And as a black person, automatically I was regarded as a Papuan. And the treatment I had for, the la for that year was appalling. Um, when I met um, Pat Benny I, and, and read about him and read about the movement, I thought it would be wise for, to generalize this within the, the, the Cape Town, within this province, especially because um, I think we share the same sentiment here. There's much racial division within this province that I experienced within Indonesia. So I think if we we starting this um, free West Papua campaign within um, Cape Town, and I really would would want to beg, not beg, but like to ask you humbly to open up your hearts and let's make this movement work because. People are dying, our people are dying. And it doesn't matter what color skin you are. However, knowing that you're a human being and you're ill-treated, that, that is not the way it should move forward as a people, you know? So I'd like to just say, and um, just read up on West Papua, get more information, educate yourself about the movement, and let's just make this work. That's all I have to say.